Good morning, Kirsty. I can't manage without you. How are you? Um, better for seeing you. You look oh, magnificent. Thank you. thank you. I'm feeling really good this week. Thank you. Well, we're we're on for young and old, so it's great to see you and the glamour herself, Kirsty. Ruth is back. Lovely to see you, Ruth. Morning. Lovely to see you. Brilliant. And Emma's in. Emma, I want to be you. Yes. I want to be you. Why aren't why haven't I got that outfit on? You're amazing, Emma. Oh, no sound, sweetness. Let's see if I can help. Yes. I'll, I'll see if I can find one and send it to you. Well, that's exciting. Yeah, I'll wear it. All right. I'll wear it. Mind you, Darwin, it could be a little bit challenging, but, you know, um, that, that may be the moment that throws me into menopause, Emma, so that could be a great thing. So, yeah, that'll be my forward-facing forward facing fashion item. That's brilliant. Megan's back with us. Queen Mary's back with us. Jamie's back with us. Beautiful Gay's back with us. Sue's in the house. Paul's with us. The legend himself is with us. Lorraine's in. Lib's in. Oh, Lib, I'm thrilled to see you. And Susie, welcome. It's lovely to see you. How are you going? I'm going really well. So happy to be here. <laughs> I'm I'm so excited to see you and Bree's back. We're thrilled. Let Bree log in. Great to see you, Bree. And look, Damien, you've got your very, very handsome profile pick up. But Damien, hopefully you can hear me. Can you hear me, Damien? Or is he you going to get a posh cup of coffee? I will just say to everybody to Damien, Damien has been again very big online because People are so inspired by the work that Damien is doing everywhere. I know we all sort of are, and we don't tell him that enough, but now the internet is telling him that. So, Damien, you're a legend. And, oh, I think that's our wonderful Susan. Is that wonderful Susan that's joined us from New York? Yes, it is. Good evening, Susan. It is lovely to see you. Hi, everybody. Can't manage without you, Susan. And, of course, Dina, our light in the darkness, is here. And, Damien, I was speaking about you, about how famous you are and how inspired people are. So you look great. Where are you, Damien? I'm at Brisbane Airport. <laughs> oh, look, that's pretty glamorous, isn't it? Yeah. On my way back from a conference. Oh, I'm thrilled. So, look, we're about to start, but can I say, just in the mail this morning, um, I got a card from Vic. And Vic sends his love to all of you. Vic was in Emma last week uh, live. So, Vic, we love you. You're part of what we do in Right Club and you're very, very precious to us. So thank you so much for the card. And isn't that pretty? Isn't it a beautiful card? So, colleagues, let's do Right Club. Let's do this. We're going to work hard. We're going to work hard. Paul, we're going to do some damage here. Damien, keep inspiring us. Dina, let's do this. See you in 29 minutes. Let's do this, team. Rock and roll. Bring it.
last minute colleagues. And we are concluded, colleagues. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And I've just seen, can I just say, those of you that know Brabbers and Steel, Fiona Steele, who is my bestest friend in Darwin ever, has also joined the call. Well, she's in an obviously undisclosed location. Fiona, welcome to Right Club. You are a light of my life. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Oh, it's exciting. So yes, she's my mate. She's my mate, by the way, Fee. So we'll get to Fee shortly. So Fee, what we do at this juncture and for our new friends that are joining us, we go around, around our virtual room and find out what people wrote during that time. So I'll start with my dearest friend in the universe, Kirsty. Kirsty, darling, one. I'm always excited to hear from you and you've had a great week. So what were you writing on during Right Club, darling? Well, I'm, I'm really proud of myself this week because I um, watched, I was getting a little bit confused with um, how uh, we do this PhD with publication and expectations of everybody and the institution itself and whatnot. And so I, I watched your publishing productivity for PhD students and I went, you know what, no wonder everyone's getting confused. I know what's going on here, but nobody else does. So what I did was everything that I have written, I have all my results that I've written up, I've done all this, I plopped it, I got the thesis template and I plopped it all in there and I've done it and I have like 180 odd pages of stuff and put it all together and, um, oh, my goodness, I actually have, um, yeah, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I can, I, now I can show them and say, here's what we have and these are all the sections of it and this is why it's important and significant. <laughs> it's like, and I'm like, oh, hey. And, um, yeah, it's, re it's very, very cool when you get it all in one place. Look, Kirsty, I love you for saying that. You've heard me say, most of you have heard me say, like, I was I, I was married to a different man when I first started saying this. But do you remember, Kirsty, I used to say, please, as early as you can, put it into one document. People go, you're mad, Tara. Then it's difficult and managing long documents is difficult. The mental space that that gives you so that you can see the completion, the emotional clarity it gives you is profound, isn't it, mate? Yeah. Yeah, I'm like, I'm even going red talking about it. Like, it's just, yeah, it, it's very, very, very cool. And um, now everybody can see where I'm at and what I'm doing. And, um, yeah, I think it's going to be much easier. You have control over your destiny. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. That, that, but thank you for um, our group especially, but also um, your videos. You know, they just keep their goal. Thank you. Oh, I, I love you forever. I'm sounding more and more like Darth Vader every day too, isn't it? Welcome, welcome to your future, Kirsty. Um, you're the best, darling, fantastic. And Queen Gay, my darling one, what were you writing on, Superstar? Oh, Sound Angel, have I got you? Well, I got some pretty nasty feedback yesterday from two markers. Um, oh, no. On that cemeteries paper, Tara. Oh no! So, trying to work through the hurt, 
I I was writing um, an email to the head of school and the head of discipline mm -hmm. to say to them that nasty comments from markers or supervisors are not on. No, mate, no. It is destructive for the student's ego. It does not allow them to improve. And it smacks of superiority. Well said. Um, I, The very first unit that I did in this current degree, I got nasty comments and I thought, do I really want to do this? I'm at the very end of this same degree and I'm still getting these. Like um, one of the, the, the first comment that one of these markers said was that the essay was tedious. Oh, that's just that's just pathetic. That is just pathetic. That's just oh god. Awful. Yeah. Um when I commented on a Facebook group for students in this faculty, I got so many people saying that they get the same things. They get all these nasty comments. Others who have not done this sort of thing are saying they don't want to do a research unit. Some of them are saying they don't want to continue with their degrees. I don't want to finish this degree. Uh, some of them are saying that they don't want to do any further study. So this is an endemic uh, problem and it's got to be stopped. And I'm writing the email to these people to say this is not on. Stop treating adult students as inferior and do the right thing and start leading the, the charge in the academic world and start calling out markers who are giving this sort of feedback. That's what I was writing about. Well, so, so can we all just firstly for Gay, just do this for Gay. So Gay, you rock and roll. Only, only two two things to say uh, from me. Colleagues, now you understand why I get so aggressive when academics don't have teaching qualifications because part of the foundations of the first year that you do in an education degree is, is foundational discursive management of assessment tasks. The second thing, Gay, one thing as your, as your old mate who happens to be a dean for that particular university, um, have a look to see if they have a staff code of conduct. Uh, and a nice way to manage those critiques is have a look at a staff code of conduct and the language uh, the language protocol perhaps in that policy, which may be useful to you. Well, thank you for that. Uh, one of these was an external marker, so it wouldn't necessarily, um, that, that code of conduct wouldn't obtain to that particular marker, but thank you for that. So, I, I'd go to there. I'd find. I'd do a digital stalk and find their university. And most universities have a code of conduct. I'm looking straight at Fiona Steele. We have a very, very strong code of conduct at CDU, and I have it up permanently as a tab on my screen. Anyway, you said Tara that you wrote an entire book in anger. Well, I'm writing this email. I wrote one last night, which I am. I filed it. I'm rewriting this. I'm still angry, and yeah. I'm. Trying to make it's not it, right. It's not right. Um, it, no, it's not. And I'm trying to make it constructive and put the onus on them to lift their game because they are destroying people's lives. Well said. So I think there'll be policy work you can do there, Gay. The way the way to create change, as Fee and I know, is hook it into a policy if you can, and then it's got to be actioned. So, Gay, we are with you and we will get the feedback next week. Rock and roll. You are the best and we're with you, Angel. You superstar. <laughs> Can I go to, to the other fighter in the group, Sue Charlton? Sue, what were, you, what were you writing on, Sue? What particularly fight and work were you doing this week, mate? Well, I was um, trying to write a bit more on my health, health literacy thing. Um, but I'm, I'm just, I, I thought I wrote quite well in the thesis. Um, and, I'm, and I'm trying to think, how, how, how much do I have to change that so that I'm not... Um, um, infringing copyright. Oh, that's an easy question. Right. So, <laughs> so you basically can crunch that crunch it all out of the thesis, mate, go control, control all, bring it all across. And then the way one manages self-plagiarism, which of course is invented like dragons, the way one handles self-plagiarism is self-citation. So you state, so an earlier version of this research appeared in this thesis. A couple of years ago and the moment you self-cite 
Bye, Felicia. It's over. All right. All right. Good. Because, um, you know, I, I keep thinking, how do I write that better? I, I, I quite like the way I said that. <laughs> Yeah, no, and that's why self citation is ridiculous. Yeah, self plagiarism is ridiculous, so because it's like I wrote it, dude. I wrote this, dude. This is me. Which particular alternative personality do you want me to cite at this juncture? Right? <laughs> yeah. So just so that, I'm yeah. also finding um quite quite a lot of um new things. So I've, I've added a bit of that as well, which is 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 good. But I just was really worried about how to move into the same um things that I've written in the thesis but that's good that is really yeah. mm. so colleagues just so you know we're working with Sue to get this health literacy piece into a short book for a publisher so this is great Sue you're legendary and and Paul let's find out what you were working on because you remain inspirational like our Damien what were you writing on brother I was uh I'm, I'm I'm doing uh, the the teaching day job, so I'm just writing a, a lecture on. Uh, so the master's program I teach on, uh, scarily, I've just moved on to teaching it. So they work in the arts and they haven't taught how to be a reflective practitioner <laughs> in the arts, which is kind of nuts, right? So I'm just putting together a couple of, uh, just putting together uh, uh, some lectures around the reflective practice in the arts and how... Uh, reflective practice is formally done throughout our lives as citizens uh, and certainly with when it comes to art that's how we perceive art is for our own reflective uh, view on that piece so it's how to then move that to uh the the kind of the scholarly and ac academic conversation and moving what i've seen already with these master students in, in this uh trimester is there through their undergrad and uh, formal education, they're really good at reporting, but they're not good at reflecting. So it's moving oh, the reporting good. over to reflection and, and picking key points of that, whether it's aesthetics, expressivity, blah, blah, blah. So I'm just putting that together. So actually within the arts in the UK, we can churn out some reflective practitioners rather than reporting practitioners, which is bonkers. But hey, there we are, that's where we're at. Yes, and considering that Rupert Murdoch stepped down this morning, uh, yeah. This is this is the moment for an alternative reconfiguration of uh, reflexive practice in the creative industries and creative arts. Paul, that's an article, brother. I'm thrilled by that. And of course, straight to Susie, who was who was straight in there on that. So, talk. What what were you writing on? And then talk to us about reflexive practice, Susie. Um, I'm just in the final stages of uh, finishing off my first year proposal for to become a PhD candidate. So I'm super excited um, and I've just been wrestling with a paragraph about one of my um, aims and significance. So my aim is to conceptually define and understand moral injury in the context of nurse managers. And the significance is that no one's done it. It hasn't been done yet. Everyone's talking about frontline workers and their experience of moral injury, but no one's really looking at the poor nurse managers who have to manage their teams whilst having to manage their own moral injury. Oh. So it's just, I'm just finding a succinct way to, to to say it and to kind of give hints at the theoretical underpinning that it's also going to oh. be significant in exploring. So, uh, And I look straight at Kirsty on that. So the idea that you're writing that as a proposal, why aren't you enrolled now writing that? So just know every word you're writing now will end up in the thesis, mate. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> oh. um, but I'm excited, like it's great. Um, I'm I'm so excited to present this on the 16th of October. So um, I'm reflection, I could talk about reflective practice for days. Um, I'm on a grant currently at our university to um, encourage other academics to put reflective practice into their specific um, disciplines. So we're working with people from all, like engineers and reflective practice um, is an interesting uh, thing that we're working with. So Paul, like, I'm happy if you want to reach out and, Maybe I can connect you with some humans at my university on how we're doing it here. We've got a fantastic gentleman in our creative arts um, faculty who's working on this grant as well too. Oh, this is brilliant. This is absolutely brilliant. And also, Paul, how interesting would it be? It would really, when you write this up as research, to actually have a diversity of professionalisms that are in action, in action through this that will add a lot of currency to the article, brother. Absolutely. And, you know, it's it's part of a larger argument, well, not argument, conversation we're having with in the UK is actually uh, a lot of disciplines 
are better suited to an apprenticeship, higher level apprenticeship rather than degree because it improves reflective practice. Um, and you have on the job practical application of reflective practice. So this this is a conversation I'm having with the uh, with the the school of of performing arts and music at the moment is actually, you know, we really need to push this. Music are very good at being reflective and, and other areas, but it seems that the performing arts at the moment, more than creative arts, performing arts are, are pretty bad at it. Um, and I think a lot of it stems from the formal education in the UK being, where well, they want to standardise marking. It's easier to mark a reporting than it is to, to mark a reflective piece because a reflective piece is individual. Um, so I think we're struggling with a backlash from... 90s political moves on education in the UK finally coming through to the higher education at the moment and stamping on that. But Susie, it's great to, great to hear other disciplines are really starting to stamp on how important reflective practice is in every discipline we do. Because it's what we do socially every day of our lives. We reflect. On oh, I was do. just going to say the same thing. You know, we do it over a glass of wine or a cup of coffee. Mm -hmm. um, it's how we unpack the relationships between um, our friends and our families and our colleagues. And the minute somebody decides to put an academic spin on it, all of a sudden, it's as you said, they describe, but they don't reflect. Yeah. I tell the, I, I feel changed after listening to Susie and Paul. That is unbelievable. You two, you two were meant to meet. That is astonishing. And should we go to the other woman that changes our life every week? The legendary Susan from Susie to Susan. Susan, oh, I, I always get sort of a bit scared asking because I get so excited. What were you writing on, Susan? Well, this past week, I spent all, every day reading and studying research methodology. Yeah, yeah. In the social sciences and, you know, by extension to history, because that's what I'm working on. So what I did was I was making notes on what I read. And then I said, okay, I'm tired of notes. You know, only, what, 10 minutes? <laughs> I'm tired of making notes. So I went back to, to working on the article that I was writing, the one that I talked about last week that I said I didn't know which, you know, hadn't decided which audience yeah. that it was for. Well, I decided which audience it's for. Yeah. So yeah. that actually makes the writing easier, knowing who, my, who I'm writing it to. And it's so like, is it too personal to ask what sort of audience did you decide on? It's an audience, it's a, it's a non-academic audience. Mm -hmm that is educated and that cares about women's rights. Yeah. yeah. I'm just nodding because I think, you know, clearly you're changing the world and that's the right woman and the right topic and the right audience for the right time. Yeah, but, you know, the, the reading on research methodology, um, because, you know, things change when you're out of the university environment for a number of years. And it's been a quarter century since I was in grad school. So things have changed. Things have changed a bit since then. So I thought what I would do is just do a review of what things are like now. And that's why I'm doing, I'm studying the research methodology, the literature reviews and all of that. This article is not for an academic audience, which is what that would be would apply to. The research methodology and all that study is review study is for other things that I'm working on. Yeah, can I say, Susan, uh, a lot has changed in the last twenty years. Not a lot of it good. Uh, and so in terms of method and methodology, uh, the the great change is really the empirical scientists won. So the diversity of methodologies that you and I were taught in those history degrees uh, 20, 30 years ago, th they're still very sound methodologies. But sadly, what's happened now is often inappropriate or inelegant tropes have now been moved from some disciplines to another and, and are wiping us and our specificity out, mate. Yeah. Yeah, I see that. I see that. I see that as I'm looking through literature. Yeah. It's it's as if the uh, historians are trying to be physicists. Yes, and as an historian who sleeps with a with a physicist, can I say it, it? It as a marriage, it works well, but as a thinking space, it's very different, Susan. Very different. And again, it doesn't mean interesting dialogues would happen, but they have to come together through a position of equality and listening and reflection, rather than this. <laughs> 
this is what is empirical, this is what is a fact, and other methodologies to configure facts are not as appropriate. So, Susan, you're doing amazing work. It's just, oh, just I. when I come to think about 2023, Susan, meeting you will be one of the incredible highlights of this year. You are amazing, absolutely amazing person. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Oh, wow. And look, shall we move to, to the woman who's about to send me, um, what do we call it, Emma? Uh, do we call it a, a snuggly? What do we call those? What do we call them in Australia? I'm not sure, but a colleague of mine calls them oodies. Oh, they're oodies. They are definitely oodies. And yours yeah, is yeah. beautiful. Oodies. Right. So as I said, Emma, you're going to be sending me one of those. That's going to tip me finally into menopause, for which I'm incredibly grateful. Now, Emma, what were you working on uh, during this, this Right Club? I ended up with starting off a, a book proposal, but the start of it is probably more relevant because I was just trying to finish off materials for a workshop I'm giving next week to help people reflect on how their, their values and beliefs reflect or don't the methods that they're, the research methods that they're choosing and what to do if you find they don't align. Well, Emma's just unified everything we've talked about for the last 15 minutes. Emma, is that is that going to appear somewhere online or in writing? Or is there any way we can all have a look at that? Or is that like a, a secret sort of organisation? Um, it's the it's it's for a specialized group, so it's for the Australasian Evaluation Society's conference in Brisbane next week. Uh, the co-author and I may may end up writing some of this, or I might ask some of the people in it to 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 co-write things with us. But at the moment, it's just a, a workshop that we're having. It's the first time we've tried anything like this. Oh, Emma, that is tremendous. And look, if there is an abstract, feel free to just sort of dump that in the chat if you can, because we would love to see it and cite you. That's phenomenal, mate. Let's see if I can find it. But but I, I may not, because I'm actually trying to spend this time listening to people, taking away my my, my thinking hat and putting on my listening hat. Do, do that, my darling. Sorry, Maeve, what darling one? I just want to say how much that relates to Emma to the previous session that we've just done, which is called Digital Office Hours, and how much that, excuse me, relates to um, Megan and everything that we, we, the whole discussion we just had for an hour yeah. has, has your topic area as an umbrella. Emma, you are legendary. Well done and well said, Maeve. Uh, I'll quickly, if I can, hurtle to Brisbane Airport and Damien. I don't know, Damien, if you can hear me or if you are actually on a flight or heading to a flight. Do you want to just say hello on what you're working on, Damien, just because your fans need to know, mate? I'll see if the internet holds up and it's not too noisy. Um, I'm still working on my uh, peer review feedback on my book chapter in the Routledge Companion to Gender and Celebrity, all about Australian television celebrity interviews. Um, so this kind of wending my way through the restructure of that article at the moment. And yeah, it's going well. Off that's, the high of a conference. So oh, <laughs> trying to like use the momentum. Damien, mate, that's great. And as I said, I hope you heard in the introduction, people are so inspired by you, Damien. There's all these comments saying just every week you inspire them. So I hope you know that. Very kind. <laughs> Okay, enjoy that. Enjoy that uh, double long black in Brizzy Airport. <laughs> the coffee's pretty good. The coffee's pretty good. It's good. Yes, it, it is good. Look, Melbourne and Brisbane actually have, I think, the best coffee at the airport, right? Sid yeah. is now. Nah. Um, Alice Springs, <laughs> you've just got to go straight for the hard spirits. Straight for the hard spirits. No <laughs> coffee. Um, good on you, Damien. You're a rock star. Queen Ruth. Now, what were you writing on? I'm excited, Ruth. Oh, well, don't be too excited. I am unfortunately working on exactly the same thing that I was working on last week, which is my confirmation of candidature presentation. Um, but I didn't finish it because the opportunity to do to piggyback on somebody else's field work and collect some data came up. But for that, I needed to get my ethics application in. So I stopped everything last week to work on my ethics application and got that in yesterday. Um, oh, so um, now I'm back to the confirmation proposal. Oh, Ruth, that is tremendous. Well done, you. And Dalwin, don't worry about every week coming to the same thing. The things I write in Right Club, I don't write any other way. I actually write my article, this is the Right Club article, and that goes out. So it's very different from what I do the rest of the week. You keep doing that. Good on you. Good on you, my darling. Should we go to Queen Mary? It's always beautiful to see Mary. How are you, my darling? Mary Mack. We'll go to our other Mary shortly. Mary Mack. 
Can I demute you, darling one? Can I, can I help you? Let's see if I can help you, darling. Let's see if I can. Sorry, Tara, I was got that many. <laughs> I've been waiting forever and then I got all confused. <laughs> I understand. Now, what were you writing on, Mary? We're so excited. Um, well, after last week when I was just about ready to, um, I did end up submitting. So it's it's been submitted to the examiners. <laughs> I tried to find my party hat and I can't find it. So. <laughs> Thank you. I couldn't wait to tell you, Tara. I'm. This is... <laughs> Look, and I know what it meant to you. Last week you were worrying me, to be honest, because it was a lot of a lot of the head movement. I was going, oh, no, oh, no, oh, no. But how do you feel, mate? How do you feel? Well, um, gee, it's, it's a bit different, hey. It's, um, yeah, it's it's not the, it's not the big, oh, but this, like the submission, um, the submission process, oh, my gosh. That's, um, that's like so stressful in itself. Um, so, you know, if you're, you know, if your people are looking to submit, really nut that out before D-Day because, holy dooly, that nearly did my head in. You've got to give it a day. You've got to give it a day. You, you know, you've got to put it through Authenticate, put it through text matching, put the authorship forms in. There's about 15 forms. Yeah. Eminent. And then um, right at the last, you know, like day before, they'd realise that, Oh, sort of bit of an eth ethics sort of thing. I hadn't got quite the 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 permission forms from the people that I'd taken photos of, and so I had to. Well, thankfully, one of them drove over town and dropped hers off, and so I quickly shot that off to the ethics people, and and so it was meant to go with the actual document, but it went separately. But they said it's all right. But you know, it was just all of these last minute things that I had to cross off and and do and. Um, you know, people don't, I needed people to ring me and, you know, they're busy and, oh, my God, I'm still recovering. Yeah, no, Mary, that is brilliant. And, Ruth, you can see why doing the ethics at this point really matters and it saves it saves what's just happened to Mary at the end, right? So you're doing a fantastic job. And, Mary, you are legendary. Mm. <laughs> fantastic. Thanks, Tara. But, yeah, it was good to see your face every, you know, whenever I could. So, <clears throat> but sometimes no, I and, and, Mary, not many people say that. Not many people say that. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, it was a lifesaver because, you know, um, yeah, so, yeah, I'm not, not finished. You know, I've still got to get it back and all that sort of thing. But we it's will a way. We will be with you through the journey, my queen. It is fantastic. Yeah. It is a joy to be of service. And although I'm desperate to hear, particularly from Carol and everybody, of course, the time has come for Dina. It is the finisher's time. Dina, Dina, come on, Dina. Dina, speak to us. Come on, Angel. Come on. So um, I submitted my revised um, result and now doing my methodology. I have did my methodology before, so um, it's just fin finalizing it and then submitting it. And um, in one of your blogs, um, you mentioned that um, uh, you, uh, you said that um, you would be surprised to read again what you have written before that you forgot <laughs> and that's what I did because I did my methodology like uh two months ago uh, and then I did my results and I found a quote in my methodology that um suddenly <laughs> uh I don't know from where it just matches so um I'm doing like this grounded theory pragmatism um approach and um the 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 uh, Strauss is one of the people that is um very onto that field, and he said that a universe marked by tremendous uh, universe is marked by tremendous fluidity. It won't and can't stand still. It's a universe where fragmenter fragmentation, splintering, and disappearance are the mirror image of appearance, emergence, and coalescence. This is a universe when nothing is strictly determined. And I got that in my result because I'm researching voluntary organization. This is how it all goes. So like when I reread that again, I'm like, oh. <laughs> so... And, and and Dina, that is amazing. Just so you know, when you are at the end of the thesis, you know you are at the end of the thesis because the plat starts to come together and you go, oh, what I said in chapter two, it bounces through chapter six. That shows great research and it shows you're nearing the end, Dina. 
<laughs> it's still it's still a long way to go. Uh, but before, could I uh, reply to Gay? Because I was a bit teary when I heard her. And uh, it was the same thing that happened to me and my COC. So um, one, <clears throat> sorry, <laughs> I'm still a bit <laughs> it's uh, remind, it, it reminded me of that. So um, this one examiner, she was very frustrated and angry at me. I don't know why. And um, she said that um, my research was below um, all those. Oh, sorry, Lina. <laughs> it's okay. No, no. I just wanted to say that my supervisor helped me through it. And um, that is why Tara said that at the beginning, it was, I was a bit gloomy because, yeah, it did. It, it, um, I came from a privileged position in my home country. I work with my ministers. I'm a recipient of two prestigious scholarships. And when I came to the COC, it really brought me down. So yeah, it was just, I, I mean, I just wanted to share that probably people who has similar experience than me, it 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 happens. And but thankfully I could process through and when I watch Tara's blog um, I mean all the failures success I had the motivation in my in myself to just finish this I still have January for my deadline but um for me this um, I'm sprinting I'm sprinting in my finish and I wish I I didn't had to sprint I wish that I didn't had to feel very low and don't have any confidence in myself because of that but um yeah so uh, I just want to say to Gay that probably um you can you will go through this I know you will you will uh go through this and you will finish this like what I feel right now <laughs> so sorry it just it still gives me flashbacks to the COC that I had before <laughs> and but so, so can we just thankfully, say can we just say, uh, Dina has captured really there the importance of kindness and compassion and respectfulness for human beings. If a human being is breathing, a human being has rights and deserves to be treated with kindness and respect. Uh, Dina is basically the reason this, this group exists. So Dina is so precious to us and all of us, and I know Paul thinks this too, what we've seen in the growth and development of Dina in the last two months has been breathtaking. And Dina, the greatest revenge is success, my darling one. Your thesis is nearly finished. And what that shows is the person who offered that commentary in your COC was wrong. Sending you hugs, Dina. I'm so sorry to bring that up for you. No, it's okay. I just can't. <laughs> it just gives me feet of flashbacks. But you will get through this, Gay. <laughs> Don't worry. Oh, I'm I'm in fighting mode now. I'm I'm yeah. <laughs> We are, we are there. So colleagues, as we conclude Right Club this week, once more, an incredible experience. I'm sorry I didn't get through to everybody, but you are amazing. We adore you. We are with you and every step to success and we walk it together. Have a lovely rest of your week. Take care. Travel well, Damien. We love you, brother. See you, team. Much love. Sleep well, Paul. See you, mate.